Well, nobody stormed the base. Everybody just had a real good time. Hey, Wonder Hussy here, headed to the infamous Area 51 takeover. You might have heard of this event in the news. It started out as a joke and some bored kid in Bakersfield posted an event on Facebook calling for people to gather and storm the secret government base at Area 51 so that everyone could finally find out for themselves once and for all what exactly they're hiding out there. The tagline was, let's see them aliens. If you've been living under a rock for the last 30 years, Area 51 is the code name given to a section of the Nevada National Security Site, where the government is supposedly hiding UFOs and or aliens that have crash landed on Earth or have somehow otherwise been captured. For many years, the government refused to even acknowledge that Area 51 existed, and even when they finally copped to it, they claimed they were only testing top secret military aircraft out there not storing UFOs or aliens. Well, no one has ever been able to prove otherwise, but that doesn't stop people from speculating, and some pretty wild conspiracy theories have emerged regarding Area 51. A few curious YouTubers and adventurers have tried to sneak onto the base over the years to see what's really going on, but they've only ended up getting arrested for trespassing because the government takes security very seriously out there. There's even signs around the base perimeter, famously authorizing the use of deadly force. Well, earlier this summer, I guess this kid in Bakersfield finally had enough and created this joke Facebook event trying to get people to gather and storm Area 51 with the idea that if enough people signed up, their sheer numbers could overwhelm the government's security forces and the people could finally find out for themselves what really is going on in Area 51. Well, it was clearly meant to be a joke. If you read the original post, you can tell the guy didn't even really know the geography of the area. I mean, the original Facebook event called for people to gather at the Area 51 Travel Center and Brothel, which is in Lathrop Wells on US 95, nowhere near any of the entrances to Area 51, which are all over on the east side of the security site off US 93, closer to the town of Rachel. But for whatever reason, it caught on and over a million people RSVP'd that they were planning to attend. It went viral and it made the national and even the international news back in June. And all the motel rooms in the, the only town closest to an Area 51 entrance gate, Rachel, all the motel rooms there sold out in like a day. And the locals started to get concerned. I mean, Rachel is a tiny settlement of something like 54 people located in the middle of nowhere without even a gas station. The only thing there is a kitschy bar and restaurant called the Little Ailey Inn, which has a few trailers out back generously referred to as a motel. How are they going to handle a million people showing up? Well, you know how Facebook is. 50 people say they're coming to your party and then only three actually show up. But even if only 20,000 out of a million RSVPs actually follow through, that's still a serious influx of people. So just in case 20,000 people did show up, the guy who started the whole joke in the first place teamed up with the people in Rachel to host a festival called Alien Stock. Not so much a takeover as a big party with bands and comedians and vendors and presumably porta potties and some kind of drinking water because when I say this place is in the middle of nowhere, I mean it. It's just a blip on a two-lane highway through a super desolate, 
undeveloped desert. And actually, the kid who started the joke in the first place got worried that the people in Rachel weren't adequately prepared for an influx of potentially tens, maybe even hundreds of thousands of people. So he ended up withdrawing his support because he was afraid it was going to be like a humanitarian crisis. And he's actually suing the people in Rachel to get them to stop using the name Alien Stock. I guess he threw his own party in the city of Las Vegas last night. Meanwhile, about 50 miles down the road, there's another tiny outpost called Heiko that's home to a glorified Quonset hut called the Alien Research Center that also plans to host its own event. And they even got washed up super DJ Paul Oakenfold to headline their party. So basically no one knows what's gonna happen or how many people are gonna show up. I mean, there's three separate parties. I didn't know if anyone was actually gonna bother to show up to any of them. So I went ahead and planned a trip to New Mexico, but I kept my eye on the news just in case. And as the date got closer, it was clear that something was definitely going to happen. So even though I was way down in New Mexico, almost in the town of Roswell, I knew I couldn't miss out on this monumental occasion. So I bailed on my trip early and I'm making the 13 hour drive to Rachel. I decided to go to the party in Rachel because it seemed like the most legit of the three. I mean, when people talk about going to Area 51, they usually mean they're going to Rachel. So I figure it'll probably be the best party. And besides, I just like the way it sounds to say I'm driving from Roswell to Rachel. It sounds like a country music song. From Roswell to Rachel to see them aliens. Either way, I'm getting super amped for this party. I have some friends that are already camped out there and they said there's actually a, quite a number of people there. Meanwhile, my friend Larry, AKA Eminence Front X5, is over at the Area 51 Travel Center in Alien Brothel, where the event was originally supposed to be. Hey Larry, what's going on over there? Yes, Sarah, thank you. Yeah, we're over here at the Alien Cat House brothel just outside of Las Vegas and uh, just across the street is where the Area 51 takeover was supposed to happen and of course that's not happening here but uh, yeah this was the original location but it uh, doesn't look like anyone's gotten confused no one showed up here except the police there's a heavy police presence out here um, but other than that it's pretty quiet as you can see that's it for now back to you Wonder Hussy from Roswell to Rachel to see them aliens Roswell to Rachel to party with my friends We'll all have a good time It will be such fun Even if we don't take over Area 51 Okay, I'm almost there Only a few more miles to Rachel This is Nevada Highway 375 aka the Extraterrestrial Highway <laughs> I'm not kidding, the Nevada State Department of Tourism actually renamed the highway and they even put up funny signs and everything. But off to the left, you can actually see Area 51 insofar as you can actually see anything. And look over on the right, that's the law enforcement base camp for this event. Holy cow, look at all them popo. I guess they really are expecting people to try and storm the base. I don't know, man. I mean, it definitely looks like there's people here, but it doesn't look like 100,000. Matter of fact, it doesn't even look like 1,000. But I'm camping with a friend who's a total doomsday prepper. And like all preppers, he's banking on a worst case scenario of hundreds of thousands of people jamming the road. So he scouted a campsite way out in the desert across the highway from the festival where we can bug out on dirt four by four back roads if need be. And I think he brought something like 50 gallons of water, 25 gallons of fuel, and 175 MREs, just in case. All right, I'm here, parked way out in the desert where my friend's little encampment is, really far from the event. It's like two miles down the road that way, but he brought bicycles for us, so. I'm about to hop on this bike and go check out the event site and see what's going on because I feel like I might need to park a little bit closer. Riding our bike here in the town of Rachel. I never thought I'd be riding my bike in Rachel, Nevada. This is a trip. Wow, there's all kind of people here. Look at all these RVs. It really is kind of like a little Burning Man out here. It's really neat. There's a lot of potential for this festival. 
Okay, we're here at the festival grounds. There's a stage right there. You can hear the dulcet tones of some troubadour performing. And then there's a few little vendors back here. So it looks like they're selling burgers. There's some other kind of food truck over there. Okay, I guess there's a few options for food. And then there's even this family-friendly volleyball setup. Look at that, people playing beach volleyball in the middle of the desert. Then you can see there that there's even a first aid station. So all these humanitarian concerns that the guy who originally started this thing had are somewhat unfounded. Because there's so many porta potties and not that many people, they're super clean. Check this out. Oh, like really clean for a porta potty. Definitely a lot cleaner than it is at Burning Man. So there's actually more people here than I thought. I'm gonna guess. Oh god, there's probably at least a thousand people here. At least, maybe two thousand. Oh my god, I definitely got to get one of these t-shirts. Look at this. The front says, I stormed Area 51. And the back says, let's see the aliens. This is my friend Shivana's RV. She's parked on that side of this little road, which is right across the street from the festival. And I think I'm going to move down here because I don't want to be that far away. My friend that I'm camped with, him and his girlfriend, they want privacy and peace and quiet. Not me. All right, I'm all dressed up and ready to go check out the festival. But it's friggin' freezing out there. It's like 40 degrees, I think, or the low is supposed to be 40 degrees. So thankfully, I got this silverback gorilla coat. <laughs> I don't know how uh, alien it looks, but I don't think anybody here is in any position to judge. Really cool, this guy brought this giant telescope out here and we were just looking at Saturn, man. You could actually see Saturn. It's a giant telescope. Ha! <laughs> UFO. It's the next morning and I met a friend who's got a Jeep and he offered to take me for a ride down to the main gate of Area 51 to check it out. We're just gonna drive down to the perimeter. We're not gonna go through and provoke anyone needlessly. We just wanna go, you know, see what we can see. But on the way, we also stopped by the infamous black mailbox. So the story with this mailbox is some rancher dude lives down here. I think his name was Steve Medellin and his mailbox was down here at the side of the road. You know how they do in rural communities. The post office guy is not going to, the mailman is not going to drive all the way down to his ranch. So mailbox down here on the road. It's the only man-made thing for miles. So it sort of became a landmark for UFO and alien enthusiasts. And they would come down here and write their names over the years. But gosh, within the last 10 years or so, they took the mailbox out. I guess it was a nuisance. It used to be white. It wasn't even black. I don't know why it was called the black mailbox, but the original mailbox was removed. But apparently... Now there's a mailbox here again. Somebody put one back up and you can see people just put their stickers, write their names, leave little artifacts, snacks. Kind of like one of those ammo cans you see at the uh, top of mountains and on trails and stuff that you hike. I might need to come back here and leave one of my stickers on this mailbox. Pretty cool, but I don't want to keep my new friend waiting too long. Uh, we got to hop in the Jeep and go down the road. Uh, apparently the main gate to Area 51 is only between two to five miles up the road that way. All right, cool. We got to the main gate. You're not allowed to actually drive any farther, obviously, so we parked here. There's a bunch of people parked here. Safety in numbers. There's a, a police officer up here, kind of standing guard, making sure nobody does anything stupid. I mean, I think they don't want anyone to get hurt. You know, nobody here wants to see anybody get hurt. So everybody's being uh, polite, cordial, and kind of doing this delicate dance. It's been a very interesting dynamic. Man, these law enforcement officers are super cool and unfortunately this guy was just saying that like a lot of youtubers have been coming up and <laughs> trying to start stuff like sticking cameras in his face going it's my constitutional right to shoot you and he's like yeah sure go ahead i have no problem with it it's just super chill these people are nice they're just trying to do a job 
not anything crazy like you see on some other channels. Okay, here's one of these infamous signs. This is the road in. Warning, if you're considering trespassing on the Nevada Test and Training Range boundary, please consider the following consequences. $1,000 fine, car towed at your expense, car impounded at your expense. You'll be brought to Heiko, Nevada. Now that's a fate worse than death. Once released, you'll be responsible for transportation to your next desired travel location. It's interesting how they actually break it down like that and actually lay it out for you. What is going to happen to you? You're going to pay, you're going to get your car impounded. Like they, they're basically going, think about the reality of what you're about to do. Okay, so now we're walking down the road. It's about, I think, 300 feet to the actual main gate. That's just kind of a warning sign. You can't drive any farther. But right around this corner, supposedly, the main gate to Area 51. And you can see up there on the hill, I think there's a couple security posted up way up top there. Just trying to make sure nobody tries to sneak around that way. Okay, here we are at the gate, the main gate to Area 51. Look at this, man. They are not messing around. There's some razor wire on both sides of the gate going into the desert. I would not want to try to breach that. Let's get up close and read these signs. It says photography of this area is prohibited, but the officer that we just talked to said it was fine to take photos. And in fact, there's, there's a satellite officer presence there and they're not telling me to stop. So interesting. Yeah, look at this. Warning, US Air Force installation. Unlawful to enter this area without permission of the installation commander. Oh gee, I wonder how I can get permission from him. Maybe he'll let me come on base and make a video. Well, if you've ever wondered what the main gate to Area 51 looks like, that's it. Oh look, military working dogs. Do not enter. Wow, far out. And they got lights to light it up at night. That looks like it's some kind of heat seeking camera, infrared camera. There's a porta potty there for the poor guy who has to stand guard all night. Wow, this is cool, man. I've always been curious, but I've never really had, to be honest, I never really had the balls to drive up here by myself. Even though I know that they're not gonna do anything to you, you know, they're just gonna tell you to leave. I'm, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret here. I'm actually a pretty big yeah. wuss. So safety in numbers, now that there's all these other people with me coming up the road. I finally had the cojones to come up here and check it out for myself. Okay, well, it sucks that the porta potty's on that side of the fence because me and my friend both have to go to the bathroom. And actually, somebody was arrested yesterday or the day before for peeing near the gate. So I'm not trying to get a fine. I just want to have a good time. So we're going to head back to the festival grounds where there's that really nice bank of porta potties. Go get them aliens! <laughs> Look, Bud Light even came up with a special commemorative beer can for this event. <laughs> it's pretty impressive, actually, when your little party gets special beer cans printed up by Bud Light. Hmm? Well, it's Sunday morning. <laughs> Happens to be my birthday, actually. But Alien Stock is over, and everyone is packing up and leaving. You can see most people actually already left. It was actually pretty quiet last night. Uh, Friday night was definitely the big party. I definitely feel like I made the right move by picking this Rachel party instead of the other ones. I mean, I don't know really what happened at the party in Vegas, and I'm sure it was fun, but you know, it's still just a party in Vegas. But the event down the road in Heiko, supposedly I was talking to somebody who was there and he said there was only like under a hundred people there, even when Paul Oakenfold was playing. So I'm sure it was quality. It's, I mean, I like Paul Oakenfold and it would have been fun to go to that, but. Man, I wish they would have just brought that over here and combined forces because it would have been so cool if everybody could just come together. So hopefully next year when they do it, everybody's on the same page and well, maybe even the kid in Bakersfield can be a part of it because he did start the whole thing and he came up with the catchphrase, let's see them aliens. But my friend that was at the Heiko party did get this very interesting flyer over there. Check this out. Okay, I don't really know what the deal is with this, but <laughs> something to do with Jesus and Area 51 and these Chinese, gosh, monks. I'm not sure what their deal is, but there's all these really complicated maps on the back with coordinates indicating that it's something to do with Christianity, I guess. It's pretty heavy duty stuff, man. And I don't even know what they're talking about. But if you're interested, you can go to that website right there. 
You know, to be honest, I expected to see a lot more of this woo-woo kind of stuff here than I did. All I really saw was people having a good time. I will definitely be back next year, but right now I'm gonna get in my rig, got everything loaded up and I'm ready to roll and explore some stuff in the area here. Because not only is Rachel home to the little alien and the Area 51 gate, there's also a ton of interesting abandoned stuff in the mountains all around. So stay tuned for more adventures coming soon. <laughs>